Good morning, boys and girls. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room here in South Berwick for another edition of Karen Reads. Today I have for you just one book called The Water Gift and the Pig of the Pig. It's a Caldecott, no, I'm sorry, the annual book donation award winner. Um, it's unusual because it's both written by someone who grew up on a farm in Maine and illustrated by someone who grew up on a farm in Maine. And that second illustrator said that that's her main inspiration for drawings is her time on that farm and especially her time with pigs. And today's book is about a pig. Okay, first of all, let's talk a little bit about something called the water gift. I'll read this section at the beginning of the book. For many centuries, there have been those, including children, who could locate underground water and sometimes gold or silver, lost people or lost animals by walking across the ground holding a Y-shaped branch. The long end of the branch points down when it is over underground water. Sometimes the forked branch is called the divining rod, sometimes the dousing stick. No one knows how this works or why it works for some and not for others. For those who love the mysteries of this world, the water gift is a source of wonder and delight. Okay, and now the book. My grandfather is a water man. He went to sea on a sailing ship when he was only 10 years old. He was captain of the big schooner of Rundell when he was 25. But he left the ship and the sea to marry my grandmother. He kept a captain's coat that he still wears on rainy days. He kept schooner stories that he tells after supper. And he kept the pig that went around Cape Horn. Isabel, he'll say to me, that pig followed me like a dog. She was smart enough to smell a storm coming. And she danced with the first mate when the storm was over. Grandmother says the pig thought she was family and slept on the rug by the cook stove. She's gone now, but we have the last pig of her last letter, the pig of the pig that went around Cape Horn. She is smart enough to count to five. She follows me like a dog and sits in the front of the boat when Grandpa and I, grandfather and I go fishing for haddock. I would say the pig of the pig is my best friend. We have a secret handshake. The pig of the pig doesn't care that I never win races or spelling contests. She doesn't care that I won't climb trees with my cousins and don't talk as much as a mouse in a corner. She loves that pig. Sounds like a pretty lovable animal. The pig and I like to go to the hun hun hundred year tree in the lane. We watch birds and chase butterflies. She hums while I sing. I stand on the rock I call a rundle. We sail it out to sea. 
Do you smell a Cape Horn storm coming? I say in grandfather's voice. With wind that cuts like scissors and saw blades. Fix your eye on a powerful star and cook hot soup. We'll get through. And we always go with grandfather when he works the water gift. Perhaps because he loves water so much, grandfather can find it even when it's hidden under fields and pastures. He takes a Y-shaped branch, holds the forked ends in his hands, and walks back and forth across a field. When the long end turns down, grandfather says, dig here, and there is water. Grandfather doesn't know how he finds the water or how his friend Ezra Littlefield once found a stray cow. He just knows the stick turns down and it can't be stopped. It's a mystery. Grandfather says it's the whole earth talking. This summer, Lovejoy, the apple man, asked for grandfather's help. Lovejoy has plenty of trees, but his am apples were stunted and wormy because they didn't get enough water in dry weather. Grandfather walked the orchard until the stick pointed down. Our neighbor, Ben Stinchfield, mean and his, as his little biter dog said, there won't be water. Grandfather says Ben Stinchfield doesn't believe in gifts. He wouldn't give away the good smell from a piece of warm toast. Lovejoy didn't listen to Ben Stinchfield, and when he dug, he found water, right, right where Grandfather said he would. Lovejoy called Grandfather the Water King of Waldo County and promised to bring us a bushel of his best apples. Then bad luck rained down like a three-day storm. Grandfather found a well for neighbors and Ben Stinchfield laughed when the water tasted like swamp tea. Grandfather spent two days on Snell's Hill and couldn't find a drop. Worst of all, he fell off the top of a hay wagon and he hurt to walk. People stopped coming by to ask for the water gift. Grandfather just sat. He wouldn't tell schooner stories. When Lovejoy brought the bushel of apple in the falls, fall, I heard Grandfather say he had lost the gift. He tossed his Y-shaped branch into the fire. After that, nothing was the same. The pig of the pig and I went to our tree, but the rock I called a rundle was just a rock. One morning, I found pig sitting in the boat waiting to fish for haddock. Not today, Grandfather said. My bones are too tired. The pig of the pig stopped humming. Then came the day she didn't show up to noon dinner. Let's go find our pig, I said. She knows the way back, Grandfather said. She'll come home. I went to the stone wall and saw a gap in the rocks. Perhaps she had followed a bird into St. Fields woods. My cousins would have searched from the top of a tree. I waited under the hundred year tree until dark. The next day, Ben Stinchfield banged on the door. 
saw someone saw your pig in my woods he said if i catch her she'll be mine and he stomped out pretty terrible neighbor I knew Ben Stinchfield was thinking of bacon and ham, pork chops and pigskin gloves. Grandmother put on her determination hat and we went out together. We looked in the pasture. We walked the woods. We called until we could only whisper, but we did not find our pig. The next day came a windy enough to rattle doorknobs. Grandfather sat by the fireplace. He didn't build a fire until I brought in the wood. Grandmother kept busy making apple pies. Put out some turnips, Grandfather said. Our pig will come for turnips. By noon, no pig had come, and the sky looked mean and lowery. I heard Stinfield walking in the woods and calling, Here, pig! Here, pig! Don't answer, I whispered. Don't answer. The cold wind blew like a Cape Horn storm, but I could not go inside. We had tried food. We had tried walking and calling and waiting. There was only one thing left to do. First, I would have to climb the hundred-year tree. I jumped and fell, jumped again and grabbed. My knees were bumped, my hands were scraped. By the time I got myself out of that tree and ran to grandfather, Ezra Littlefield found a cow. We'll find our pig, I told him. We never quit in those Cape Horn storms. We can't quit on the pig of the pig. Grandfather looked at the forked branch in my hand. He stood up and buttoned the top button of my coat as if I might be cold. We'll try, Isabel. We headed toward the woods and crossed through the gap in the stone wall. He put my hand on one side of the branch and we walked slow step by slow step. So they each had a hold, a hand holding the, the branch as if they were dousing together. Grandfather said, is the pig of the pig to the north? The stick stayed pointing up. Is the pig to the east? I said, perhaps it was just my shivering hand. Perhaps it was the wind, but the stick wavered. We held tight. The stick pointed down and we turned east. We walked over rough ground past brush and boulders, and there was our pig at the far side of the woods, fallen into a hole. So they found her using the dousing ship, ship, um, stick shared between them. It's a wonder that Stinchfield hadn't found her he and his biter dog would have walked past that hole, hole every time he went into the woods. But Ben Stinchfield does not believe in the earth talking. When we pulled her up, the pig of the pig was limpy and worn out. Both ears were bent down and she was splotched with mud. She remembered 
the secret handshake though and she did a little three-legged skip you might call it a dance i danced too Then we went home to grandmother's kitchen for hot soup and apple pie. My grandfather has the water gift, and so do I. Annie Bates has asked us to find a well for her chicken farm, and she promised to pay with oak wood. Grandfather said we'll build a sailing ship in the barn this winter. Next summer he will teach me to sail, and the pig of the pig will hum and once in a while dance her three-legged dance on the deck. And I believe I forgot to tell you the names of the people who created this book. The writer, Jacqueline Briggs Martin, who grew up on a farm in Maine, and the illustrator, Linda S. Wingerter who also grew up on a farm in Maine. Okay, a very classic Maine book today. All right, take care, bye-bye.